A kid goes missing for two years. You won't believe where the cops found him. Ending a relationship between a married couple is synonymous to heartbreak and sorrow. Yet things get even more complicated when kids are involved. As such, an event impacts them at too many levels and turns their world upside down. Especially if they have to choose which of their parents they want to live with. Needless to talk about the legal battles, custody disputes, court appointments, and the ensuing high bills. Today's story is about Shannon and Michael, whose divorce led to the most bizarre disappearance case. But before we start today's story, make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any new stories. Michael Chikevdia and Shannon Wilfong had already had a rocky relationship when they found out that Shannon was pregnant with Ricky. And despite their efforts to make it work and stay together for Ricky, their disputes were too much to handle. Eventually, they agreed to end the relationship and shared custody of their son and took all the needed measures to make sure that little Ricky would have a normal life. Yet, soon after finalizing their divorce, their old disputes resurfaced again, ruining whatever remaining amicable ties they had left especially after Michael's overseas deployment. Being part of the National Guard meant that Michael had to spend extended periods of time away from his hometown. Yet, still, he did his best to remain in contact with Ricky. Still, despite Michael's effort to maintain a constant presence in Ricky's life, the kid simply couldn't handle his father's physical absence and missed him all the time. Upon coming back from his deployment, Michael discovered that Shannon was doing a very poor job parenting little Ricky turning the kid into the victim of her divorce from Michael and breaking one of the major agreements they'd made upon divorce. And that's Shannon had to seek out specialized counseling regarding Ricky's parenting. The fact that pushed Michael to sue Shannon for breaching their custody agreement and to reclaim his right of visiting Ricky on the agreed-upon dates. Yet Shannon didn't show up to court and the judicial decision granted Michael temporary custody of his son. Yet, when Michael tried to contact Shannon and bring his son home, he couldn't find them. Both Shannon and Ricky disappeared, and no one knew about their whereabouts. And by November 2007, they were declared missing. And later on, a warrant was issued in the name of Shannon for defying the court ruling, parental kidnapping and running away with a child of whom she didn't have custody. All of the efforts to find Shannon and Ricky failed. Michael didn't know what to do next, apart from keeping on searching all possible places for his missing child. Meanwhile, Shannon's mother, Diane Dobbs, launched a fully-fledged defamation campaign against Michael, accusing him of abusing little Ricky, the fact that pushed Shannon to take the kids somewhere safe away from the abusive father. She even displayed posters on her front yard accusing Michael of being a liar and a child abuser. Diane's relentless efforts at destroying Michael's reputation instead of looking for her daughter and grandson made Michael suspect that the old lady was definitely in contact with Shannon, and she had to be trying to hide something. Michael approached the police with his suspicions, and in response, they searched Diane's house, yet without finding anything that would help them locate Shannon and Ricky. Two years passed, and all Michael's unyielding efforts to find his son failed, and he was showing no signs of giving up until the day the cops received an anonymous tip that led them to pay Diane's two-story house one more visit. Yet this time they were determined to scrutinize every inch in search for any clues. As the police were inspecting the house, they moved a wooden dresser aside to make the most unexpected discovery. The wooden dresser was hiding a hole that led to a 12-foot-long, 5-feet-wide, and 4-feet-tall dark room in which Shannon was hiding with little Ricky. Further investigation revealed that Diane used the secret room to hide her daughter and grandson from the police for the past two years. The kid was found in a seemingly good condition, and Michael's years of looking for his son were finally concluded with success. Yet things didn't stop there, as the story of Ricky and how he was hidden away in a 60 feet square dark room for two years took the national media by storm, naming him the boy behind the wall. Ricky was so happy to finally leave that dark compartment and step outside Diane's house for the first time in two years. In fact, Illinois Police Master Sergeant Stan Diggs said, we let him out of the car and he ran around like he'd never seen the outdoors. Everyone, including the media, came to one conclusion. 
the little boy was forced against his will to hide away in a dark room instead of enjoying a normal life. And whoever were the perpetrators, they must be held accountable for this appalling act. Shannon was taken into custody and she faced several charges, including child abduction, and Diane was charged for aiding child abduction and joining her daughter in jail, before the latter was freed on bail. After her release, Shannon tried to manipulate the media in favor of her daughter claiming that Ricky enjoyed his two years of house confinement. Yet the kid's condition said that the opposite of that. He demonstrated signs of isolation. Fortunately, the kid could quickly recover from his ordeal soon after his liberation as he surprisingly reintegrated into social life easily as he was placed into custody of Michael's relatives. Meanwhile, Shannon pleaded guilty to five misdemeanors and was released on $1,500 bail. Still, she spent two years on probation while Michael gained full custody of his son. Retiring one year later, Michael could finally offer Ricky a normal life in a stable home that he was denied because of his mother's irrational actions and decisions. The big question remains, how could Shannon get away with what she did with such a lenient sentence? The judge and the prosecutors who were in charge of Shannon and Diane's prosecution must know that their leniency might be sending the wrong message regarding stance of the law on child abuse and abduction, and how narcissistic people can get away with what they do unpunished despite the negative impact of their actions on the lives of other people, including innocent, helpless kids. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comment section below.